What's up guys, Tuga here, back again, and it is time to start the sim for Nations United. Now we have made a couple of changes to the roster here, so I'll go over them really quickly before we really get into this. Although I should say, you know, it's not really the first few seasons I'm concerned about. It's after that, once we have the prospects from these nations. Here are the lines we are going to roll with. As suggested, I added the Kostitsans, so we'll see what they end up doing defensively it looks pretty much the same not the strongest defense we could have possibly had goaltender big change we're going with Jonas Hiller instead of Frederick Anderson we'll leave him on Toronto Grubauer will be the backup down in Iowa we have so much squad depth uh, Michael Raffles there we added Marcel Gotch we added Stefan DaCosta Damian Bruner uh, Peter Reagan we also added we now we have guys like Kuhn Hockel Ronald Kennens. Defensively, we added Philip Larson. He has also been added to the Vancouver Canucks in the Islanders mode. Thomas Pock, another defender we've added. Ramon Habarenka. Andreas Nodal. Unfortunately, we only have five defensemen, so Nodal is there as well. Scratched players, Fiala. Daniel Sprong. Now, there are certain players I haven't added because despite their birthplace or their nationality, they play for other national teams. Anton Hadobin is a prime example. Born in Kazakhstan, plays for the Russians. Daniel Sprong, born in the Netherlands, but wants to play for Team Canada, but he hasn't gotten a license to play for Team Canada yet. Obviously, that's more of a career move. You're not going to really accomplish anything playing for the Dutch, but playing for Team Canada could be very big. But regardless, we have him here. We also added Kaspar Daugavins, the goaltenders, Christos Gudlevskis, and Nicholas Truedel. But that is the team. Let's waste no more time because, honestly, we really can't make any moves at the deadline anyway. So we're going to need to sim hopefully the entire season here in this one episode. And actually, I think I'll bite the bullet. This might be a longer episode, and I normally like to you know, have these be under 20 minutes. But we are going to have to sim the entire season because, obviously, we're not going to really make any moves at the trade deadline. There is absolutely... No purpose, because we can't get the majority of NHLers. This series really kicks off in about two seasons or so, once we have, you know, gotten prospects in from these nations. And really, again, it's going to be, we, we will scout other nations aside from Germany and Switzerland, but those are the big two. Like I said, if we have, say, a Belarusian that was playing in Russia, he is eligible. But if we have a Russian that was playing in the United States, he is not eligible, but let's keep simming here. Not the worst start to the season, and Jesus Christ, 7-6 final against the LA Kings. Yes, it's going to be a good year for rookies. Of course it is. It is the first uh, season. Stefan DaCosta injured. That is fine. Everybody's injured, apparently, down in Iowa, so it's a good thing we have squad depth. Uh, Joe Vitale, no thank you. I'd like to pick you up there, but we cannot, as per rules of this series. So, so far, a 5-2 and two record on the season isn't terrible. I mean, that's the, this team shouldn't be terrible to begin with. Obviously, goaltending, a little bit of a weak point. Defensively, a little bit of a weak point. But, I mean, come on, Zuccarello, Kopitar, Vanek as our top line. We, uh, we should be a playoff team, at the very least. But we are in... A very tough division. I should say this as well, and I can't believe I forgot to mention this. As Grubauer goes down to injury. I can't believe I forgot to mention this. Um, as far as where other players went, rather than um, rather than putting, say, uh, Zach Parise, trading him straight up for Anze Kopitar, I just released everybody into free agency and had it be an absolute free-for-all. So, odds are a team like L.A. or like the Nashville Predators in the case of them losing Roman Yossi, were able to replace that player because of the extra cap space they had. But I figured that way it was a bit more fair. Otherwise, it might have been a bit too unbalanced in terms of having to give certain players to certain teams. But it is what it is. I do expect that um, it'll have some sort of implication down the line, but... We will wait and see. Again, the way I originally wanted to set this up was going into GM mode itself and trading everybody. But that would cause the game to crash every single time. I guess because the game simply couldn't handle 
the amount of trades that were being made. That's the only thing that I can think of, which kind of sucks because, again, it puts a hindrance on the amount of a the amount of fantasy you can really have in this game. And it's not like it's a realistic game to begin with. Does the menu not want to lag? Thank you. All right, let's see. A 4-1 loss to Chicago this first month. Yeah, it's going all right. We're, I mean, we're in a playoff spot, so that's good. But obviously we have a very long way to go. Grubauer will be back in goal. And then after this game, hopefully we can have a uh, larger sim period here. We just had so many back-to-backs to start this month. And indeed, we will be able to go pretty far into the month of November. We will sim up to this game on November 27th against the Winnipeg Jets. 11-7-2 on the season. Not the best record. Grubauer is in goal for this game here against the Jets. Yannick Hansen actually just went down an injury as well. Thus, why Tobias Reeder is happy about being dressed as he was the one called up. We get the 2-1 win against the Jets, and we're actually going to do a decent bit of simming here. I'm not going to worry about back-to-back -back games. I'll do that on my own time. Let's sim to the All-Star break. Let's see where this team stands, just to make this episode a little bit shorter, like I said, because we will be simming the entire season. So let's see what happens. Grubauer is going to be getting quite a few games as well, so it will really be testing our depth. But let's sim the next two months, guys, and see where we stand. The Wild have reached the All-Star break, and unfortunately, it's not looking too good. 25, 21, and 3 on the season. The Iowa Wild are doing good. That's because they essentially have an NHL B team down there. It's been tough. We're actually not in last place in our division, which is shocking, really. But it's it's been a rough go for this team, that's for sure. I mean, a lot of injuries, too. I should point that out. We have had a lot of injuries, but I don't know necessarily if we're a playoff team at this point. There you get a look at the points. The Kostitsin have nine goals between them, so that pretty much shows you how it's gone. We might look at a few roster changes here as far as the goaltending goes. Let's take a look at Jonas Hiller and how he's done. He has a 912 Grubauer, a 921, so the goaltending hasn't been there. And I mean it's it's a thrown together team, obviously. I mean we just took any player from the non Big Seven countries and threw them into a team. I'm not sure what I was expecting. I was kinda hoping we'd make the playoffs, but we are in a pretty tough division. But moving forward, Jesus Christ, we have a lot of games. Um, let's see, where should we go? How far down the line should we go at this point? You know what? Unless anything major happens, let's go to the end of the season. Why not? Like I said, we're not going to make any changes at the deadline because there's nobody that we can pick up. We really need to get through these first few seasons as quick as possible to set up our new, you know, and to really showcase those new prospects, whoever they are. We don't even know if they'll be good enough to showcase, but we'll find out soon enough. So let's go to the end of the season and see if we're a playoff team. The season has come to an end, and guys, we are not a playoff team. We finished dead last in our division, 40-36-6 and six on the season. A point back, in fairness, a point back of the Predators. We were close. We were very, very close to being a French playoff team. But obviously, this club as it stands is very, very far away from being the powerhouse that we were with the Vancouver Canucks. But there you get a look at the standings. Toronto, Columbus, Arizona, Vancouver, Edmonton, New Jersey, maybe even the Bruins, teams you would expect to see at the bottom of the standings, so it was kind of realistic in that aspect. My one regret is I didn't get to take a look at where the uh, normal Minnesota Wild players ended up signing, but we'll give you a quick look at the points. Kopitar, our leading scorer. Vanek had a decent year. Hansen, Zuccarello. I mean, like I said, we had a lot of injuries to deal with and a lot of players who simply couldn't do anything. Michael Grabner was pretty terrible. I'm not sure why he's down to an 80. Actually, a lot of players are down in overall. Nikolai Ellers, we actually ended up sending him back to junior because we had the option. Uh, but overall, just a pretty disappointing season. We'll finish up the playoffs, take a look at the awards. Hiller with a 907, a 913 for Grubauer 
in 20 games. But let's go ahead and take a look at the playoff tree. Who is in it? Uh, whew. I'm going to say Chicago, Pittsburgh, Chicago wins the cup. That's my guess right there. The good news is, though, that the Iowa Wild are monsters and have won 52 games this season. So they very well could have a very, very long run, especially with good Lefskis in the goal. But eh, you know what? Let's follow the Iowa Wild. Let's follow the Wild here one way or another. And we'll see if they can have any playoff success. And, of course, we'll take a look at the awards. And then in the next episode, this series truly begins as we go through the draft and, of course, get a look at how, uh, at who, at how, at whom some of our future players will be. We'll scout those six goalies. I will say this, too. As far as the draft goes, we'll probably do it live and pretty much just look at who's projected to go next, you know, sort it by that column, and then just see whoever the highest person is that we can draft from a certain nationality is who we will take. Are the Wild going to crash and burn out of the playoffs in the first round? They are. Jesus Christ. Are you serious? How many games did you guys win? 54 games and they crash out in the first round. All right, then. Um, <laughs> well, that didn't, that didn't go too long. I'm going to sim ahead here. I'll show you the awards, and then we'll wrap up this episode, guys. And there you have it. The Winnipeg Jets win the Stanley Cup in their first season. They won the President's Trophy, I believe, or at least the Western Conference title. They beat the Preds in five, the Stars in five, the Flames in six, and then swept the Detroit Red Wings in the first round. My cup prediction of Chicago over Pittsburgh, not a very good one, as both lost in the first round in six games. Down in the AHL, the Rochester Americans also swept the final, beating the Stockton Heat. So, interesting to see that the Jets... Uh, we're able to get the win. I will take a look, too, with the complete stats. And, yeah, the Jets actually won the President's Trophy. See if we can find guys like Parise and Suter. Crosby wins the Art Ross. Kane, the Hart. The Norris to Eric Carlson. Lady Bing to Kane. McDavid wins the Calder. Pavlek wins the Con Smythe. Okay, then. Vesna Trophy to Holpe. Jennings to Lungfist. Masterton to Matt Tennyson. Uh, Taves with the Selkie. The Lindsay to Kane. And the Rocket Richard to Vladimir Tarasenko down in the AHL. Ty Ratty picking up quite a bit of hardware. Rafael Diaz wins the Best Defenseman Award. Good Lefskis with the Best Goaltender. So a little bit there, but a hell of a season. Hey, Good Lefskis, two awards. Hell of a season for Ty Ratty of the Chicago Wolves. But that will do it for Season 1. Again, I wanted to keep this episode pretty short because I honestly had a feeling that we weren't going to be a playoff team uh, really quickly, let's take a look at the Jets. Who did the Jets? They signed Brodeen, so that's huge. Little Wheeler had great seasons, some great seasons overall. Four guys on this team. Them being able to sign Eunice Brodeen for nothing was probably pretty damn big in terms of their success. And, of course, we know that they still had Pavlik. Sidney Crosby with 104 points. Holy shit. Anybody in the area in terms of former Minnesota Wild players? How far down are we going to have to go? I mean, come on, Parise. How bad of a season did you have? Like, unless I've completely overlooked someone, I have not seen a single member of the Minnesota Wild that, of course, be there by default. Hoodler signed in Calgary again. So that's interesting. Anybody... <laughs> Any members of the normal Minnesota Wild any time now. This is terrible. Like, really? Rip. Maybe maybe we might have had a better team than the normal Minnesota Wild at this point, because there is fucking nobody. Did no member... I wonder if they're still free agents. I mean, we know Brodeen was picked up. I had to have overlooked somebody. There we go, Jason Palmonville. Signed with the LA Kings. Alex Radulov, only an 82. 52 points. In Montreal. All right, guys, that will do it for this episode. Again, I hope it was somewhat enjoyable. I know this is a different kind of series, and it's going to take a little bit more time to get invested in and to get those players that we're really going to build around. But that starts in the next episode with the draft, and I will see you guys then. Thanks again for watching.